This video is about loci in the complex plane. So firstly, the modulus of z is the distance of z from zero, just like modulus for real numbers. And uh, the modulus of z minus w is the distance between z and w, which tells us that the locus of point z in the complex plane satisfying z, the modulus of z minus z naught is r, is a circle of radius r centered at z naught. So um, if we want to find the Cartesian equation, we could replace z with x plus i y and z naught with x plus i y naught. And then we could work out the modulus of this number z minus z naught. And um, so we're not going to do that because we'll see that in a second, but that's the method in general for finding the Cartesian equation is to write everything in terms of real and imaginary parts. Okay, uh, and if instead we have the modulus of z minus a equals the modulus of z minus b, this is the locus of point z which are equidistant from a and b because it, this is saying the distance of z from a is the same as the distance of z from b. So the only way that can happen, if we have two complex numbers, a and b, z has to be equidistant from them. So we get a line like this, which is the perpendicular bisector of this line, a, b. So now if we move on to this example, sketch the locus of complex number z, such that the modulus of z minus five minus three i is three. Okay, well, using the above, this is a circle centered at 5 plus 3i of radius 3. So 5 plus 3i is here. And then we've got a circle of radius 3 like this. So this is 5 plus 3i. This is 5. And we get this circle is the locus. Find the Cartesian equation of the locus. So now we're going to replace z with x plus i y. So we're going to get the modulus of x plus y i minus 5 minus 3 i is 3, which is the same as the modulus of x minus 5 plus y minus 3 i is 3. And the modulus of a plus b i is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So this is the root of x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared is 3. So therefore x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared is 9. And now this is the Cartesian equation. And then lastly find the maximum value of the argument of z in the interval minus pi to pi. Well. The argument is the angle that some complex number z on this circle makes with the positive real axis. So for any point on this circle, we could draw a line from 0 to z and then measure this angle. So where is this angle going to be maximum? If you think about as we travel around the circle, at this point 5, the argument is 0. It increases as we go round. And when we get to the top, we get something like this, but still over here, the, the argument's going to be even higher. So the maximum is going to occur when this line here is tangent to the circle. So we need this line to be tangent to this circle. Well, if it's tangent, it meets the radius at a right angle. And then we have a right angle triangle. And notice it's congruent to this right angle triangle below. So we want to find the argument. We need to find this whole angle here. Well, in pink, we've got just half of this angle that we need. And we can find this pink angle because in this triangle, this is five, this is five plus three i, this distance is three, this distance is five. So this angle, uh, if we call this theta, theta is arctan 
of 3 fifths. So the whole angle is 2 theta. So therefore, the max value of arg z is 2 lots of arc tan 3 fifths, which we can then work out. which is 1.08 radians to 3SF. Okay, we'll now move on to a different example. So if we consider this example here, given that x plus i, y satisfies the modulus of z minus 12 minus 5i equals 3, find the minimum maximum values of the modulus of z. Okay, so first let's sketch the locus of complex lambda z satisfying this equation. So this is a circle centered at 12 plus 5i of radius 3. So in the complex plane we have this circle up here of radius 3 centered at 12 plus 5i. We want the minimum and maximum values of the modulus of z Note that the modulus of z is the distance of a point z on this circle from zero. So this distance is least at the point on this circle nearest zero, which is this point here. And it's greatest if we go all the way to this point over here. So we need to find the distance from zero to this point and the distance from zero to this point. So note that we can, well, first we know the center is 12 plus 5i, and we know the radius of the circle is 3, so the diameter is 6, and we also know the distance of 0 to 12 plus 5i. So the modulus of 12 plus 5i is the root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, which is 13. So we know this whole distance is 13 to the center of the circle. And the radius is 3, so the minimum value of the modulus of z is 13 minus this radius here. That would just give us this bit. And the maximum value of the modulus of z is 13 plus the radius, which would take us all the way to this point over here. So the minimum value of the modulus of z is 10, and the maximum value is 16. Now we move on to the following example. Given that the modulus of z plus 3 is the modulus, sorry, the modulus of z minus 3 is the modulus of z plus i, sketch the locus of z and find the Cartesian equation. Okay, well, we now have something of the form modulus of z minus a equals modulus of z minus b, so this is a perpendicular bisector. It's the point z that are the same distance, that are equidistant, from 3 and minus i. So we have minus i is down here, and 3 is over here. And the points that are equidistant, we get a... So if we draw this line in, we need to do the perpendicular bisector of this line. So this is equal to this in length. Okay, so in pink this is the correct locus. The Cartesian equation, well, it's perpendicular to the line joining minus i and 3. So if we can find the gradient, so the gradient, if I call this, maybe if I call this point A and this point B, the gradient of AB is the change in y, which is 1, over the change in x, which is 3. Therefore, the gradient of the locus is the, is the negative reciprocal of this, which is minus 3. And then we know a point on the line. This midpoint lies... So what is the midpoint? Well, it's halfway between minus i and 3. So it's 3 over 2 and minus a half, uh, yeah, 3 over 2 minus a half i. So, we have a point on the line, we have its gradient, so we can find its equation. 
So the equation of the locus in Cartesian coordinates is y, well, the minus the y coordinate, which is minus a half, equals the gradient times x minus the x coordinate. And then we can expand and simplify. We get y plus a half is minus 3x plus 9 over 2. So y equals, uh, sorry, 4 minus 3x. And now we want to find the least possible value of the modulus of z. So again, the modulus of z is the distance of z from 0. So we're thinking about points on this line and their distance from 0. And when is this distance minimized? It's going to be minimized when the line joining 0 to this line is perpendicular. So the perpendicular distance is the shortest distance of a point from a line. So we need to find the length of this little perpendicular line here. We know that this perpendicular line has gradient a third. So this, so in Cartesian coordinates, the gradient of this perpendicular line here is y equals a third x. And we can then solve simultaneously with the equation of the locus to find this point where they meet here. So if we call this point C, we can say at the point C, we have a third x equals 4 minus 3x. So 10 thirds x equals 4. So x equals 6 fifths. And y is a third x, so y is 2 fifths. And then now we've got the coordinates of this point C, we can find this distance. So the minimum value of the modulus of z is the square root of 6 fifths squared plus 2 fifths squared, uh, which is 1 fifth or 2 fifths root 10, I think.